Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to look at alpha halogenations of carbonyl compounds in acidic and basic conditions. Alpha halogenation, as the name implies, is a halogenation reaction where we add bromine, chlorine, or iodine to the alpha position, the carbon directly near the carbonyl compound. This can be carried out under acidic or basic conditions and is a great reaction in your retrosynthesis arsenal because once you have a halogen, you can introduce elimination or substitution to get different reactivity on your molecule. This reaction is regioselective where the stability of the intermediate will help you determine the final product. The key intermediate is the enolate, which we broke down in the last video. You can find that along with the practice quiz and cheat sheet on my website, layforsci.com slash enolate. We'll start with the acid catalyzed alpha halogenation. You can use any acid catalyst that when reacted with water will give you H plus or H3O plus. Carbonyls are not as reactive under acidic conditions unless they're activated. And the first step will be the carbonyl activation where the lone pair of electrons on oxygen will reach for and grab a proton from solution. Oxygen now has a total of three bonds, one lone pair, and a formal charge of plus one. But oxygen, as an electronegative atom, is unhappy with this charge and starts pulling on the pi electrons between itself and carbon, making carbon very partially positive. This pulling carries down to the rest of the molecule, especially towards the more substituted carbon, because the more substituted, the more stable the resulting carbocation. And so if we look at the more substituted hydrogen, this is the one that we can take away. In acidic conditions, we can use a weak base like water to grab that alpha hydrogen, but instead of collapsing the electrons onto carbon and giving us a carbanion in an acidic solution, that can't happen. The electrons will travel towards the carbonyl carbon, which is partially positive, and that in turn will kick up the pi bond between carbon and oxygen, collapsing those electrons back onto the oxygen atom. Our intermediate is a pi bond between the more substituted carbon and the carbonyl carbon, and an oxygen that now has two lone pairs, two bonds, and no charge. If you look at the enol intermediate, you'll see that we have a very substituted pi bond given that we took a hydrogen from the tertiary carbon. If we took a hydrogen from the secondary carbon, the pi bond would be less substituted and therefore less stable. This is why the reaction happens at the more substituted alpha carbon. Another product of this step is the regeneration of hydronium, our acid catalyst. Now that we have an enol, we have a molecule reactive towards the halogen. And you should recognize this reaction as the very same mechanism you saw for alkene halogenation, where the alkene will cause an induced polarity. So for example, here we have Br2, which is neutral, but as the pi bond gets close, the electrons from bromine slightly run away, giving us a temporarily partially positive bromine, and this is what gets attacked. But it's not the lone pair on oxygens that does the attack. The lone pair on oxygen will come down to reform the carbonyl, kicking out the pi electrons, and those are the electrons that reach for the bromine. Bromine would have too many bonds, and so the second bromine is kicked off as a Br- in solution. The carbonyl is reformed, but now once again it has three bonds, one lone pair, and a positive charge. But on the alpha carbon, we now have a halogen, in this case a bromine. The final step is the deprotonation, and that can happen with any weak base such as water in solution. Water will grab the hydrogen, give oxygen back its electrons for a final neutral product. Alpha halogenation under basic conditions is not base catalyzed, but instead base promoted. In an acid catalyzed reaction, we regenerated the acid catalyst, but in base promoted, we use up the catalyst, and that means it's not actually a catalyst if it's not reformed in the reaction. For this reaction, because basic conditions are so strong, there's no need to activate the carbonyl. We go right to the attack. We'll use a base like NaOH, where the OH- will use its electrons to grab the alpha hydrogen, collapsing those electrons towards the carbonyl, kicking the carbonyl electrons onto oxygen, forming our enolate in one step. We now have oxygen with a single bond to carbon, two initial green lone pairs, and a third lone pair from the former carbonyl electrons. We also have a pi bond between the alpha carbon and the former carbonyl, giving us our enolate intermediate. 
we also have a water molecule forming in solution from the OH that grabbed a proton. This destroyed the base's ability to react, justifying the base promoted rather than base catalyzed reaction. The next step is very simple. The enolate electrons will collapse back down to reform the carbonyl, kicking out those pi electrons so that the attack comes directly from the alpha carbon. Those electrons will reach out for and grab one of the halogens, collapsing the bond between them and kicking that second chlorine off as a chloride in solution. Our product has a reformed carbonyl and a chlorine atom sitting at the alpha position. This is where you would expect to stop with a mechanism. But keep in mind, not only do we have another alpha hydrogen, this alpha hydrogen is even more acidic than the starting alpha hydrogen due to the inductive effect. Having an electronegative halogen present at the carbon holding the acidic hydrogen means that the halogen is pulling on the electron density, making that hydrogen even more partially positive and even easier to remove. You can show the reaction happening one more time to replace that hydrogen with a chlorine, but this is even more important when the alpha hydrogen sits on a methyl ketone because that'll give us a haloform reaction, which is exactly what we'll discuss in the next video. You can find that along with this entire video series, practice quiz, and cheat sheet by visiting my website, leaforsci.com slash enolate.